The big day is finally here when Serpentor launches his massive attack on Springfield, but it's not what you think. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 308, from Image Comics. See you in three. I have morons on my payroll! Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 308. Larry Hama's latest entry in the series finally dispenses with all the planning and preparation to pull the trigger on the biggest offensive in recent G.I. Joe history. Was it worth the wait and all the buildup? Yes and no. There's some great spots, but there's some odd spots as well, so let's talk about it. Last time we left everybody in G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 307, the recon team who snuck onto Cobra Island got the stolen intel back to Joe headquarters by transmission, but the team was ultimately captured by enhanced cyborgs, some of which were wearing bow ties, which looked a little funny. Meanwhile, Suprentor took delivery of special modified bombers from Revanche. Dawn received the bad news that her parents had been killed, and the real Zartan arrived in Scotland to warn Destro about the imposter robot sent by Serpentor. That brings us to the current issue, number 308. We learned that the recon team, comprised of Muskrat, Molto, Helix, and Wetsuit, are taken back to the base on Cobra Island. The team is bound and blindfolded, but that doesn't stop them from formulating an escape plan as soon as they are tossed into a storage room. Writer Larry Hama kicks things off on an odd note by using the rule of proportions. The smarter our heroes get, the dumber the henchmen get. The Joes are actively communicating with each other and saying out loud how they know where they're headed purely by the sound of their surroundings, where the car goes, how it turns, which way the wind blows, etc. If the Joes know where they're headed, and the henchmen can hear them telling each other as much, what's the point of having them blindfolded in the first place? Back at the pit, Duke gives mission orders to his ninja team, led by Scarlet. They're meant to use stealth to infiltrate Springfield and learn what's happening. Consistent with issue number 307, everyone on the team supports Dawn, knowing she has complicated feelings about returning to Springfield due to her parents' death. Again, Larry Hama gives you another scene that's a little bit odd. The Joes are a crack military organization, but everyone has a heart of gold when one of their own is hurting. That's nice to see. We want everybody to be supportive, which is good. But it's a hard-nosed military organization on the brink of a war. So that scene makes you feel like it isn't quite ring true. If Dawn was truly compromised due to her emotional upheaval over her parents' death, would Duke really send her in on a mission like this? I don't know, my gut says maybe not. Back at Cobra Island, Serpentor and Dr. Mindbender gleefully tore the airfield, giving the word to launch their special revanche bombers as the first wave of attack against Springfield. What's so special about the bombers? They don't carry bombs. The bombers carry enhanced mutant cyborg Cobra troopers, say that five times fast, ready to be dropped from 5,000 feet into the middle of Springfield. Admittedly, the modifications to the bombers at the heart of Serpentor's plan are an unexpected and cool development. It's a safe bet that nobody expected cybernetic mutants to plop down in the middle of their garden, which should make for a surprisingly effective shock and awe tactic. But does it succeed? Maybe, maybe not. What follows is a rapid-fire succession of scenes that keeps the assortment of teams moving in their respective directions, ultimately to converge on Springfield. The recon team escapes their bonds and jumps the guards, performing a uniform swap to get to Dr. Mindbender's lab unnoticed. Zartan, Baroness, and the Dreadnoughts drive a nondescript truck carrying the Thunder Machine to Springfield. Scarlet and the Ninja Team unwittingly pass Zartan's truck on the road, who headed for the same destination. And lastly, when the Recon Team gets the jump on Dr. Mindbender as he, after he returns to the lab, they're surprised when they learn that they've got some kind of special person on ice who has an arrow in his eye. The issue concludes with the start of Serpentor's first bombing wave, but the mutant cyborgs quickly find out Springfield is prepared for their visit. Overall, G.I. Joe Real American Hero has improved over the last several issues because that pregnant pause of anticipation waiting for the big attack is finally over. Larry Hama keeps a myriad of subplots moving in the same direction while planting the seeds for more developments in the near future. Plus, the last page twist is yet another wow moment. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. To date, Paul Pelletier and Tony Cordos have done an excellent job since taking over for Chris Mooneyham. Every panel is well rendered, dramatically constructed, and significantly enhanced by Francesco Segala's coloring work. Fortunately, some of the details get lost in the smaller panels with wider shots, but this comic looks great on the average. Let's talk about the big picture. Readers picking this title up new from Image may rightly wonder where this title fits in the interconnected Energon universe. The answer is it doesn't. 
This title remains a faithful, standalone continuation of the series from its time at IDW, which means there isn't a Transformer or Energon Cube anywhere to be found. And the G.I. Joe characters depicted in this series are effectively alternate versions of the ones you see in the Energon universe. Final thoughts, what do we think about G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 308? Begins Serpentor's long-planned attack against Springfield with action, espionage, twists, and surprises. Larry Hama's script expertly moves a myriad of teams into position for the big payoff, and the art team's output is solid. Overall, we like this issue, like it a lot, and probably even like it better than some of the recent ones. Therefore, we're going to give G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero number 308, an 8 out of 10. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up if you're a G.I. Joe fan, and let us know in the comments if you like the standalone title better than the Energon version, or vice versa. But before you go, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, and if you like more video reviews just like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.